Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, passion for excellence. This is Auto Line Daily for August 2nd, 2010, and now the news. Is the global economy starting to slow down? Could be. According to Wards, global new vehicle sales were up 27% in the first quarter, but that dropped to a 14% growth rate in the second quarter. Trend lines indicate that by the end of the year, monthly sales could be down where they were in 2009. Global vehicle sales for the first half of the year totaled 37 million units, compared with 31 million for the same period in 2009, and that would suggest the second half will be real slow. But even though sales are starting to slow down around the world, it looks like they're improving in the American market. Bloomberg reports that July will probably be the best month of the year so far. It says the market may hit an annualized rate of 11.9 million units. That's still weak, but better than the month before. Meanwhile, Ford says that retail demand is picking up in the American market. Much of the increase for the Detroit 3 this year was fueled by an increase in fleet sales, but now it looks like more retail customers are coming back into the market. Wards reports that Ford's looking for July sales to increase over a year ago, despite the fact that the Cash for Clunkers program started in late July of last year. And maybe that helps explain this next report. For the first time ever, Honda produced more vehicles in the U.S. than in Japan. Not by much, only 260 cars, but that is a milestone. And Honda also increased its full-year profit forecast. According to the Detroit News, the company posted a $3.2 billion net profit in the first quarter thanks to increasing car sales and strong sales of motorcycles in emerging markets. Honda raised its full-year operating profit estimate to nearly $5 billion. Apparently, the U.S. is not the only market where import brands are popular. So is China. According to Gasgu, even though the auto market is starting to slow down in China, sales of imported cars are red hot, increasing nearly 115% in May. Imported vehicles with engines smaller than three liters are the most popular models. It's been a long, hot summer in most of the Northern Hemisphere this year. Autovaz, the Russian automaker, just announced that it's going to shut down car production this week because it's just so dang hot. Bloomberg reports that temperatures in Togliati and southern Russia are expected to hover in the 45 degrees Celsius range. That is 113 degrees Fahrenheit. Here's a little factoid I was not aware of. Harley Davidson makes sidecars, well, at least for the time being. According to Autoblog, the motorcycle manufacturer has been in the outrigger business since 1914, but it just announced that 2011 will be the final year that sidecars are available as a factory option. In a press release, it cited a decline in retail demand as the reason for their discontinuation. If you've got one on your bike, though, no worries. The company will still cover units under warranty and its dealers will stock replacement parts. Coming up next, we're going to take a look at the brand new Buick Regal. Introducing Bridgestone's third generation of run-flat tires with groundbreaking new Bridgestone technologies. Bridgestone run-flat tires offer improved ride comfort, lower rolling resistance, and improved wear while giving you the peace of mind and comfort you need. The 2011 Regal represents a new beginning for Buick. With this car, the company is pushing into a segment it really hasn't competed in before. Autoline Daily correspondent Craig Cole filed this report. With Hummer, Saturn, and Pontiac out of the way, Buick is finally getting the resources it needs to grow. A prime example of its expansion is the 2011 Regal. A quick walk around this car is all it takes to understand that it's a different kind of Buick. It is definitely not your grandparents' Roadmaster. Well, it, it's, a, it's a smaller uh, class than we've been in, but it's a huge market opportunity. Mid sedans is uh, the largest segment in the industry at over two million, and having an entry that we think fits right in the heart of that market is key. Um, we we want to promote the Buick Regal and it's kind of Buick Sport injected sedan. GM is going after competitors like the Acura TSX and Audi A4. That may sound ambitious, but the Regal is built on a solid foundation. The Opel Insignia 
2009 European Car of the Year. But why did Buick decide to call it Regal? Were other historical nameplates like Century, Wildcat, and Electra not as popular? Last time we used the name Regal in the U.S. was in 2004. Regal had a lot of good heritage, performance heritage. It was the, the leading performance vehicle for Buick for many years. Uh, when you do studies to say what recognition is out there for past names, Regal has nothing but positive recognition to new and old buyers. Uh, so with that, if we're going to continue to use a, an old Buick name, Regal fit perfectly. And if you think of its performance heritage and what we're trying to do in a new premium performance sedan, it fit. All of this talk of sport and performance may sound like marketing doublespeak, but GM is actually backing up these claims. Sure, the base engine won't set the world on fire, but at 2.4 liters and 182 horsepower, it's perfect for everyday driving. The optional power plant is where things get interesting. Borrowing a page from the tuner crowd, buyers can step up to a turbocharged four-cylinder engine delivering an estimated 220 horsepower. It's a fun combination, but GM has some even better news for enthusiasts. Later this year, again, we plan on offering it with the two-liter turbo with both a six-speed automatic and a six-speed manual to truly compete in the performance segment, mid-size performance uh, segment, the sedan, we need one. We don't expect it to be a huge penetration, but uh, we need to deliver it, and it's a, it's a wonderful package. It'll be interesting to see how well the Regal sells, particularly compared to the redesigned Hyundai Sonata, which also offers a stylish body and a turbocharged four-cylinder engine. Thanks for that report, Craig. Later in the week, we'll take a look at some of the nuts and bolts details on the 2011 Buick Regal and learn a little bit about how the car was developed. So stay tuned. And that's it for the top news in today's global automotive industry. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.